Welcome traders to Tickmill's weekly market outlook for week commencing the 28th of June with me Patrick Munley. In the US, volatility levels are sinking fast again following a brief hiatus around the FOMC meeting. Given the DXY is heavily weighted to low yielding European currencies and the yen, the default position is that the DXY will be range bound until further notice. In the week ahead, the further notice will be the pickup in the US data calendar including consumer confidence, ADP, ISM, and culminating in Friday's June non-farm payrolls figure. The recent FOMC meeting suggests the Fed's trigger finger will be a little twitchier when it comes to tapering, but unless the NFP figure comes in close to the 1 million mark, financial markets will probably be set fair for a low volatility summer. And the US has a public holiday uh, July 5th to celebrate Independence Day. With $800 billion worth currently being parked at the Federal Reserve repo facility, clearly any talk of liquidity removal is premature. That should leave the market looking for carry, but probably funded out of Euro, Swissy, or the Yen. Other global market events to look at this week are issues like one, the OECD discussing a new minimal global corporation tax, two, the US Navy exercises in the Black Sea, and thirdly, China celebrating 100 years of the Communist Party. And lastly, First look at June, uh, China PMIs. None of these look an immediate threat to the current environment. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index is in the mid midpoint of its range uh, from the 93.45 to the 89.20. Um, what I'm looking for now is as we hold above the 91.50, I'm looking for an extension to the upside and ultimately look for a break of the prior highs at 93.43 to the equality objective at 93.73 and then on towards the yearly pivot at 94.14. Uh, really at this stage, only a loss of 90.50 would suggest uh, the upside is complete and a resumption of the downtrend. Uh, in the Eurozone, the Euro continues to retrace the FOMC and due sell-off, but no one expects the Euro to lead this recovery. The ECB has made it clear it does not want to be dragged into premature tightening, and we should hear that message in the week ahead from a whole host of ECB speakers, especially from Christine Lagarde. The data focus will be on the first look at June inflation data, but consensus expects headline and cause remain subdued around 1.9% year over year and 0.9% year over year, respectively, hardly a trigger for any ECB change of heart. We'll also see June PMIs across the whole region. These should echo the surprisingly resilient flash estimates that we've seen so far, suggesting supply chain disruption might not be as bad as feared. Also look for French regional elections this weekend. Uh, last week's vote and little impact on markets where a low turnout saw support for both uh, Macro and Le Pen marginally uh, decline. Recall France sees presidential elections in April 2022. So from a technical perspective, the euro dollar has retraced up into just shy of that 120 zone, uh, getting to see some supply come into the market uh, above 119.40. So as 120 caps the upside advance, I'm looking for an extension to the downside, retest of the uh, prior lows 117.05, en route to the equality objective and descending trend line support coming in at 116.25. At this stage, we would really need to see a close back above uh, 122.41 uh, to suggest that uh, downside objectives have been neutralized and refocus on the upside. Uh, the yen is being used as the preferred uh, funding currency for the summer's carry trade with target currencies, those backed by tightening cycles. So far, these have been exclusively in the emerging market space, but the list is growing by the week. Short yen is a consensus view, yet it seems it will take quite a lot to knock the market out of its carry-seeking stance. Local interest this week could be uh, the full-year results for the world's biggest pension fund, the Japanese uh, GPIF. Like Norway's sovereign wealth fund, the GPIF has quite high weightings for equities and thus should have done very well in the fiscal year to March. We'll also be interested in any changes in its portfolio weightings. We would have thought, though, that it would have increased its allocation to FX hedge foreign bond markets given the collapse in rates at the short end of the curve. So from a technical perspective, as the dollar yen holds above this trend line support, which comes in now currently about 110.10, I'm looking for prices to extend to the upside and take out the prior highs 
um, at 112.22. And then from there, I think we may see some corrective action. At this stage, really, we would need to see a close below 109.50 to neutralize the upside objectives and suggest a, uh, a bigger corrective move to retest support back to 107.50. It should be a uh, calm week on the UK front uh, and for sterling, I guess. The EU, uh, sorry, EU-UK trade dispute has calmed and it seems the grace period on chilled meats imports in Northern Ireland will be extended. The BOE did not bring too much surprise this week, and although a little bit more hawkish than expected, still the MPC refrained from pointing at earlier rate hikes. On the data front, the final uh, first quarter UK GDP reading will be released on Wednesday. Shouldn't bring any surprise with June house pricing data and May mortgage approvals both released on Tuesday. And I wouldn't think they'll affect sterling too much. So as sterling has also, like the euro, corrected back up into its resistance at the 140 level, I'm now looking for prices to extend through the 137.87 lows of last week down to test uh, 136.60 as support. However, if we hold uh, the lows from uh, the back end of last week at 138.56, we may do a double correction and take a look at 140.80 before getting that extension down to the 136 target zone. At this stage, we have to see a close above 141 to uh, neutralize the downside objectives and refocus on range highs up to 142.50. Uh, the Aussie dollar has uh, has followed the rebound really in high beta currencies last week, trolling off some domestic woes as the spread of the COVID-19 Delta variant for Sydney back into lockdown. RBA rate expectations have inevitably shifted to the hawkish side after the June FOMC meeting. And the market is now pricing 45 basis points of tightening in two years' time, up from 25 basis points before the Fed's hawkish shift. Still, rate expectations remain low when compared to Canada and New Zealand, where markets are pricing almost 100 basis points of tightening in the next two years. This means that there is a sizable room for the Aussie uh, to benefit from the RBA sounding hawkish at its July 6 meeting. Before then, though, there's no clear domestic catalyst for the Aussie and the data calendar is rather sparse. The only event of note in the week ahead is RBA Governor's low speech on Tuesday, which is one day before the start of the bank's blackout period, and it's unlikely that uh, that's going to be any policy headlines released there. So from a technical perspective at the moment, uh, whilst the Aussie uh, continues to find resistance uh, above the 76 handle, I'm looking for prices to extend down to the equality objective versus the swing structure here uh, to test 74.20 before seeing uh, a potentially a more sustained corrective move. And again, at this stage, really, we need to see a close above 77.20 to neutralize these downside targets and suggest a return to test uh, range highs back up into the 79 handle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 28th of June. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.